Our menu today, a French-inspired garden party, and our health challenge, make it gluten-free. A crustless quiche Lorraine with turkey bacon and Swiss that is not only gluten-free, but lower in fat. A salad with baby greens, almonds, cranberries, and nasturtiums, because edible flowers are perfect for the occasion. Serve those with a delightfully light gluten-free popover, and finish with adorable decadent pedophores that will have anyone saying, bon vivant, a très bien. Jen and welcome to my kitchen. Today my menu is a lovely French inspired garden party and my challenge is to make everything gluten free. Now I'm going to start with a beautiful quiche Lorraine that is both gluten free and low in fat and tastes great and it's so easy. The first thing I'm going to start with is turkey bacon instead of using regular bacon because turkey bacon is lower in fat and calories but still has all that great flavor. To that, I'm going to add about half a cup of onions. Just going to give this a quick fry. I love using nonstick cookware because you don't have to add any additional oil. I'm going to go ahead and put this in my quiche pan. You'll notice I'm putting this directly into a quiche pan without a crust. And that is one of my tricks for making this gluten-free, because crusts generally have a lot of gluten in them because they're made with wheat. Now, I could make a gluten-free crust, but to me, a quiche is really about how good the eggs are with all of the herbs and spices and goodies in them. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave out the crust entirely. Now, my trick for making a low-fat quiche is using a real egg product that's actually low in fat and cholesterol-free. Now, you can find this in your dairy section. It comes in like little milk carton containers, and it's made from real eggs. To that, I'm going to add half a cup of soy milk. So that's about two cups of my egg product and half a cup of soy milk. And you can give that a quick whisk. Now, as a thickening agent, so that it sets nicely, I'm going to add two tablespoons of rice flour. And give that a quick whisk. Now rice flour is great because it's gluten free, so you can use it in a lot of your baking. You just want to make sure that's really well whisked together. To that I'm going to add about a tablespoon of Herbe de Provence, which is a lovely combination of thyme, margarine, and dried lavender. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of kosher salt. and a little bit of fresh ground pepper. And whisk that together. Okay, now into my quiche pan, I'm gonna add about a cup of low-fat or fat-free Swiss cheese. I love cheese in my quiche. And it's so important to pick a low-fat version because it's just that much healthier. You're saving on the fat and the calories and the cholesterol, but you're still adding all that great taste. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and pour in my egg mixture. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna put this in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. Now, sticking with our French theme, we're going to make a lovely Dijon vinaigrette. I'm going to start with about a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. And two tablespoons of balsamic vinaigrette. For a sweetener, I'm going to use agave nectar. 
It's beautiful, it's sweet, it's a healthier sweetener, and it just incorporates nicely. I'm gonna give that a quick whisk. Now I'm gonna add two tablespoons of olive oil. You'll notice a lot of recipes call for more oil, a quarter cup or a half a cup. And honestly, it just doesn't need it. Give it a little taste. Hmm, that'll be lovely on our salad. So coming up next, we have our beautiful gluten-free popovers and our gorgeous salad with our edible flowers. Our gorgeous quiche is out of the oven and cooling, and we're about ready to mix our salad together. But first, I wanna make some popovers, or puffs as you call them. They're gonna be a beautiful gluten-free addition to our garden party menu. Now the first thing I wanna do is prep my popover pan, or you can use a traditional muffin pan. You can use a safflower oil, any light oil, and of course, always make sure that it's non-hydrogenated. Very important. Now I'm gonna put my pan in the oven for about 10 minutes. The oven's 400 degrees, and this is gonna prep my pan for the batter. Okay, now to make our batter. This is so easy, and I'm gonna make it in a blender. And of course, with all gluten-free flours. I'm gonna start with a cup of soy milk. I like soy milk and it's low in fat and with no cholesterol. And now I'm gonna use the same egg product that I used in our quiche, which is a fat-free, cholesterol-free, real egg product. I'm gonna use a cup of that. And to that, I am going to add a quarter cup of tapioca flour. There are many types of gluten-free flours out there, and the trick really is to find the right way to mix them together so that you get the same kind of consistency and result that you would with normal flour that has gluten. Now this is a quarter cup of rice flour. I'm sorry, I'm actually using half a cup of rice flour. I have two rice flours here. That's a traditional rice flour. Now I have a quarter cup of sweet rice flour. They're two different things and they have two different ways of baking. Now I'm adding two tablespoons of buckwheat flour. Again, no relationship to wheat, doesn't have the gluten that wheat does. A tablespoon of organic cane sugar, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, a quarter of a teaspoon of xanthan gum, which is a binding agent. and two tablespoons of non-hydrogenated soy margarine. So these are not also lower in fat, they're also dairy-free and gluten-free. And we're gonna blend this on high for about two minutes. Make sure you stop to scrape down the sides as you go along. There we go. That should be about perfect. So let's grab our pan out of the oven. Okay, careful because this is really hot right now. And this is gonna help our popovers to puff. Now I'm gonna fill each one of these about three quarters of the way full. Okay, now let's put this back in the oven. Oof, it's hot, so be careful. We're gonna put this in a 400 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're nice and puffed. Next, to plate our quiche. This is cooled off a bit. Now I have some gorgeous greens for our salad. I have frisée, I have red lettuce, baby spinach, arugula. And I'm gonna go ahead and serve this bistro style, which is the salad right on the plate with the quiche. Pardon my fingers. Now I'm gonna sprinkle some beautiful chopped almonds on that salad for some nice crunch.
some lovely dried cranberries. You can also use raisins or currants. I'm gonna give our dressing a quick mix. The Dijon vinaigrette is so French. I love it. Just do a little bit of a drizzle. Because I use less oil, it makes a bit more of a condensed dressing, so you just don't need very much of it. Now I'm gonna add nasturtiums. There are so many beautiful edible flowers that are out there, and nasturtiums are one of my favorite. They have really nice peppery flavor. And they can really help dress up our garden party. Of course, you wanna make sure when you're buying your flowers to eat that they come from a florist or a garden that doesn't use chemicals or dyes on them. That's gonna be beautiful for our party. And coming up next, we're gonna start on our pedophores. Now we're gonna put our pedophores together. Now pedophores are little layered tea cakes and you can use just about any type of cake and flavoring and frosting that you want. I've gone ahead and made two beautiful almond layers and these are gluten free. I made them ahead of time. The recipe is on our website at jensguiltlessgourmet.com. Now there's so many aspects to putting pedophores together that I find if you do your cakes ahead of time and then chill them, they're just that much easier to work with. So the first thing I wanna do is add a little bit more almond flavor to my almond cake. I have a little spray bottle with amaretto in it. Now this is my favorite trick because instead of really dousing your cakes in alcohol, I can just spritz a little bit of amaretto flavoring over the top. Next, I'm gonna add a layer of apricot jam. Apricot tastes so nice with the amaretto and the chocolate that I'm gonna glaze this with. This is something to really impress your friends with. I love apricot. Alrighty, now for our next layer. You'll notice that I have these sitting on foil. I actually bake them on foil in my cooking tray so that they'd be easier to remove because I'm making a very thin cake. Pedophores are all about thin layers of cake. And you can cut a bigger cake and cut it in half, or you can just bake a really thin one. Gorgeous. Now the next thing I'm gonna do for our next layer is marzipan. Now marzipan is basically an almond confection, but all too often it has flour added to it, which means it's not gluten-free and won't work for our garden party. So I'm gonna make homemade marzipan. It's so easy and it's gonna taste really fabulous. So what I have is almond paste. Now this is pure, pure almond paste. And I've kind of kneaded it up into little balls to soften it, and I'm tossing it in my food processor. Okay, I'm gonna start with about half of that. Now I'm gonna add about one egg white. I have two in here, so. About an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And of course, a little almond extract. Just a few drops. Now I'm gonna pulse this to combine it. Okay, I've added my full two cups of almond paste and I'm gonna add just a little bit more of, of my egg whites. Okay, that should be good. Mmm, this looks beautiful. I'm gonna set these out of the way. Alrighty, now we have a beautiful almond, nice paste consistency. I'm gonna go ahead and just take this onto our counter here. Clean off our blade very carefully. Set that in the sink. I'm gonna start with just about this much. 
Now what I want to do is take powdered sugar and I'm going to knead it into the almond paste to make a nice dough so that we're going to be able to roll it out almost like a rolled fondant consistency. Rolled fondants are made very different than this. Here's where we get messy. It's going to be really sticky at first, but as we incorporate that powdered sugar into it, it's going to become more like a dough. There, that's getting to a nice consistency where it's more like a dough and we're going to be able to roll it out. Now we don't want this to stick to the counter, so I'm going to put down some more powdered sugar. There we go. Rolling things out always reminds me of my mom. She grew up on a farm in Minnesota and they made everything from scratch. So our kitchen was always full of floured countertops and sugared rolling pins. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm well coating the rolling pin. I'm well coating the counter. And it's a great trick to use sugar to do it if you're rolling something sweet. Because when you're rolling a savory crust, you'll use flour on the counter. But sugar will work just as well, in this case, a vegan powdered sugar. And if I was rolling something with chocolate, you can use cocoa powder. This is going to be such a lovely layer to our pedophores. A nice, gluten-free marzipan. Now, I added a little trick to my marzipan. I added a bit of rice flour to my powdered sugar. But if you don't have access to rice flour, you can just use the powdered sugar, or I have some alternatives online as well at jensguiltlessgourmet.com. Okay, that looks like that is about going to fit on our cake. Just going to lightly release it from our counter here. I'm going to fold it over. This is so delicate to work with. We can smooth it out once we get it on the cake. I'm just going to kind of keep releasing it and folding it over on itself, and then we'll just unfold it when we set it on the cake. Here we go. Marzipan is such a wonderful confection. Lovely. Now I'm just going to go ahead and cut the excess from around the edges. You know what? It's very pliable, so if it starts to tear, you can just push it back together again. Beautiful. Now next, we're going to cut this into little petite squares and glaze it in chocolate. Now I'd put my cake in the freezer just to cool it off enough so that the jam sets and the marzipan sets nicely. It'll just make it easier to cut and glaze. So now since these are pedophores, they're petite little tea cakes. So I'm just going to cut them very tiny. Oh, these are beautiful. Mmm, with that amaretto and that apricot jam. Now, we get to cover them in chocolate. Okay, so I have some chocolate melting on the stove right now. What I've chosen is a vegan dark chocolate. Once again, I love to read all of my labels and really know what's in my food. And this chocolate only, not only has no animal products in it, but I also put acai berries and blueberry powder in it so that it has just some added nutrients to our food. Because why not? If you can make chocolate even healthier, then go for it. Then, to keep it from seizing, I'm going to add just a little bit of coconut oil. You can use any other very mild oil. And that keeps the chocolate from hardening right away as you're working with it. I'm just going to put it over the top and let it drip down on the sides. Just finish these off, make sure everything's covered. Now the acai berries and the blueberries in this chocolate are so full of antioxidants, which are so good for you. Now we're going to plate these. Oh, these are going to be beautiful. Now my chocolate's a little soft right now, and you're going to want to wait to let that harden up a little bit before you serve them. If you want to speed up the chocolate hardening, you can put it in the refrigerator or the freezer. 
Now just for a little color, I've taken a little bit of powdered sugar and a little bit of guava juice and I've just made a really pretty little drizzle glaze. If you just hold it up high and go back and forth, oh, it'll be so pretty. Just a little extra touch. And because it's a garden party and we're focusing on flowers, for a final touch, we're just gonna plate each plate with a little miniature rose. <laughs> Beautiful. Now for the final touches on our garden party. I have a lovely apricot jam I've mixed with some honey. And I'm just gonna drizzle that around our popovers because that will be just lovely on those. And it will mirror the flavor of the apricot jam in our pedophores. And before I pour the champagne, I'm actually gonna put a drop of rose water in each champagne glass. And all you need is a drop because it's beautiful and fragrant and it's gonna give that little bit of added specialness to our party. I have a nice rose champagne. going along with our flower theme. Let's top these off. Oh, it smells so nice. You can just smell the essence of the rose. And of course, because rose petals are edible, I'm gonna float one in each glass. What a beautiful touch. Now remember, if you have a recipe you would like me to make healthier, write to us on our website at jensguiltlessgourmet.com and enjoy sharing these recipes with your friends and family. Cheers to a healthier planet and a healthier you. Mm.